Coming up on Valley View News, formerly incarcerated people get a second chance through Project Rebound. Plus, restaurants are forced to make changes during the coronavirus pandemic and how COVID-19 won't stop some people from surfing. Hello and welcome to Valley View News. I'm Nikiko Burnett. And I'm Liliana Ramirez in the Digital Media Center. California fire crews prepare for what's expected to be the worst fire conditions in Southern California this year. Strong Santa Ana winds, low humidity, and dry vegetation create high risk. In the meantime, the Los Angeles County Fire Department says it's increasing staff and pre-deployment resources. Fire officials are telling the public to have their own plan ready. Santa Ana winds may reach up to 80 miles per hour in the mountains. Los Angeles Dodgers ace Clayton Kershaw came up big in his World Series starts. The three-time Cy Young award-winning pitcher has a 2.31 ERA and 14 strikeouts. He won both his starts in Game 1 and 5. Uh, he was yelling at me, step off, step off, step off. So instinctually, I just kind of did it, and uh, it was, that was a big out for us right there. In Game 5, Kershaw showed off his awareness with his highlight play throwing out Manuel Margot trying to steal home. That would have tied the game up at 3 in the 4th inning. Kershaw made 25 career postseason starts. He is 4-1 in the 2020 playoffs. This World Series is the first time in their past three appearances. The Dodgers have reached three wins first. The Dodgers haven't won the World Series since 1988. Some California amusement parks will stay closed after new reopening guidelines were released last week. The new COVID-19 protocols are part of Governor Gavin Newsom's safety plan for opening the state. Smaller theme parks in the orange tier can reopen. Most of California's theme parks are in the red and purple tiers. They may remain closed until early 2021 or next summer. Orange County's COVID-19 numbers increased, so less restrictive measures will not be put in place. The county reported 316 new COVID-19 cases. Four people have died. Officials say the daily average needs to be around 130 in order to relax the rules. Los Angeles County reported 830 new cases and four deaths this week. LA County officials also confirmed two new cases of a rare corona-related condition known as a multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. So far, more than 3 million people in LA have taken COVID-19 tests. 9% tested positive. Students at CSUN can now join Project Rebound. The program lets former incarcerated people get access to higher education and gives them a chance to improve their lives. Our reporter Alexis Amesqua explains the benefits to the program. And at the end of our presentation, you know, um, Project Rebound has finally landed at CSUN. The program strives to connect formerly incarcerated students to better opportunities and mentors. Student intern Maria Martinez says programs like Project Rebound help people become better members of society. To not go back to those ways and be productive members to society. Incarceration doesn't mean it's the end of the world or that one has to stop striving for greatness. Project Rebound Executive Director Martha Escobar wants students to understand how coming out of incarceration can lead you in the right direction. With that knowledge, they can move forward. We can develop our collective understanding of how incarceration has become a social tool. Um, and then two, for the students themselves to empower themselves with that knowledge. Too. Students shouldn't have to worry about the program set their lives back. Instead, it will help them avoid a lot of their old habits. It's meant to make them better people. We have some individuals that do have like five children, but they're trying to better themselves for their children, for themselves and for the community. It's like, why not have the program? Project Rebound is open to anyone on campus. To connect with the program, go to csun.edu slash humanity slash Project Rebound. Reporting from Northridge, I'm Alexis Amesqua for Valley View News. Senate Republicans voted to confirm Amy Coney Barrett's nomination to the Supreme Court. Senate Democratic leader Chuck Schumer criticized Republicans, saying they rushed the vote to happen before the November 3rd elections. The Republican Party is willing to ignore the pandemic to rush this Supreme Court nomination forward. 
Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski of Alaska and Susan Collins of Maine voted against confirmation along with all the Democrats. Barrett's is a third Trump-appointed justice on the court. It fulfills a longtime Republican plan for a conservative majority of the highest court. Five members of Vice President Mike Pence's inner circle tested positive for COVID-19. His chief of staff, Mark Short, is one of them. President Trump and Pence continue to minimize the risks associated with the virus. Both have traveled across the country campaigning at large rallies just days before Election Day. Democratic vice presidential candidate Kamala Harris says everyone should follow safety rules. Listen, he should be following the guidelines. We're doing it. I think we have modeled the right and good behavior, and they should take our lead. The top issues in the election are COVID-19 and relief packages to help those affected by the pandemic. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows continues to squabble over a COVID-19 stimulus relief bill. Meanwhile, millions of Americans are waiting on promised aid from the bill. Pelosi wanted to approve the deal before the election, but she says both sides can agree on language for virus testing, jobless benefits, and state and local funding. We cannot just say, President, here's trillions of dollars, spend it any way you want. We have a plan, a strategic plan. Negotiations continue to take place between White House and congressional staffers. More than 50,000 people voted so far in Los Angeles County before next week's election. The county clerk's office says 118 voting centers are open using safe COVID-19 protocols. The locations are open all day. They'll stay open until Election Day. Nationally, so far this year's election has more early ballots than 2016's early voting turnout. Roughly 58.6 million ballots have been cast. Voting locations in Texas and Florida already took in millions of ballots as local offices try to avoid crowds and long lines. More than 1.6 million ballots have been turned in for LA County. County officials will add 649 voting centers this week. Some teachers are still getting used to virtual learning while trying their best to stay connected to students. Reporter Yahaira Joaquin talks to a teacher about the technical challenges she faces. Teachers are still trying to adapt to virtual learning. Fourth grade teacher at Vaughn Next Century Learning Center, Helen Pham talks about her online teaching challenges. It's definitely different in person and having them being able to respond to you so much but now in class, it's like, oh, can you, can you please unmute so I can hear you? Don't have things ready for lunch. Many teachers experience technical difficulties as more users join the video conferencing website. I'm at a charter school, so we started a little bit earlier, but when LAUSD came in, Zoom had crashed that day. And some teachers are trying to stay connected to their students personally and not only wirelessly. I was able to do an in-person meet and greet, social distancing, of course, and so I was able to meet my, all of my students and their parents. Student assistant Crystal Barrientos works at Lenox Academy, says students are now using websites to replace in-person activities. Um, other teachers use different programs for, like, there's a class that they take engineering, so there's an engineering um, program that helps them kind of, like, develop um, little objects. Teachers can find materials online for tips to create a more engaging online environment for their students. Reporting from San Fernando Valley for Valley View News, I'm Yahira Joaquin. Wilton Gregory is the nation's first African-American cardinal. Pope Francis appointed the Archbishop of Washington last week. Gregory had pushed for improved race relations and emphasized the importance of young African-American Catholics seeing a bishop who looked like them. He's a strong supporter of the LGBTQ community and immigration reforms. He also advocates fighting climate change. Gregory was one of 13 men named as new cardinals. Nine of those 13 are under age 80. They'll all be eligible to participate in the next convocation to select Francis's successor. The first nest of the so-called murder hornets was discovered in Washington state. It was destroyed. The giant hornet are normally found in the Asian countries. They can deliver painful stings and spit venom. Washington's managing entomologist Sven Spischiger says the public doesn't need to worry. 
Uh, generally speaking, though, uh, you're not going to be encountering these. So the general public does not need to be worried about hornets coming out of the air and spraying them. The crews wore with protective suits while vacuuming the invasive insect from a tree into large canisters. The nest was about the size of a basketball. There were around 100 to 200 hornets in the nest. The CDC says hornets, wasps and bees kill an average of 62 people a year nationally. Several restaurants have closed since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. Valley View News reporter Amanda Alvarado spoke with a co-owner of a restaurant in Canoga Park about how the pandemic has affected business. Restaurants are struggling since Governor Gavin Newsom closed indoor dining statewide. Co-owner of Viva La Vida Mariscos, Maria Preciado, says the most difficult part of owning the restaurant is making enough money to pay rent. We are making enough to pay our employees, but for rent, we have a pretty large bill to cover. Preciado says she misses being able to offer better hospitality to her customers. Interact with the people and offer better service because one now can do that because we are not able to get too close to one another. Papas, right? Lucy Enriquez, a frequent customer, says the restaurant does make her feel safe. I see that everyone's taking the precautions with gloves, with the mask. They have hand sanitizer at the entrance and they're keeping the distance with the customer. So it's like every other business. Since the pandemic hit, restaurants have focused on curbside pickup, delivery and outdoor seating. Reporting from Canoga Park, I'm Amanda Alvarado. More to come on Valley View News, some surfers want to get back into the water, and how gyms are adapting to COVID-19 restrictions. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Eva Marie smoked 12,000 packs of cigarettes over 15 years. She quit, and now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stopped smoking. Now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. Delta Airlines banned hundreds of people for not wearing masks. Delta says it added 460 people to its no-fly list. The company began requiring passengers to wear a mask on May 4th. Major airlines now mandate that travelers wear a mask regardless of federal rules. But these airlines aren't sharing their no-fly lists with each other. So after one carrier bans a person, they'll still be able to book a flight on a different airline. There's a potential deal between Dunkin' Donuts. Parent company Dunkin' Brands and Inspire Brands, the parent company of Arby's, Sonic, and Buffalo Wild Wings. Inspire Brands would pay $106.50 per share for Dunkin', making it a $9 billion deal. Dunkin' Brands confirmed merger talks, but Inspire Brands would not comment. Costco is now selling an at-home testing kit for COVID-19. It doesn't involve putting a swab up the nose. The kit is a new saliva test, which only can be purchased online. It costs between $130 to $140. The process is simple. First, you buy the test. Next, you conduct the test yourself at home and then mail it back in. Results take between 24 to 72 hours. Medical experts say the results come back faster than many other testing methods. After retiring from a successful surfing career, a Ventura County resident shows Valley View News how she's teaching the sport regardless of a global pandemic. Here's Cindy Rodriguez. Ready, one, two, three. Mary Osborne didn't miss a beat while California beaches were closed during the coronavirus pandemic. Now, the former pro surfer is in her happy place, 
teaching anyone how to catch a wave. I really love uh, sharing the sport uh, with young kids and, and anyone. Um, it's, it's such a healthy sport to be out there. Mary surfed professionally for more than 20 years. The champion longboarder retired and started the Mary Osborne Surf Academy. She's taken to mentoring people who want to pursue professional surfing. People like her head instructor, Alana Klassen. I've known Mary forever. I've always wanted to travel and do what she does. And so I just had to get out there and figure it out. And I, ever since I got on the water, I fell in love with it. And even during uncertain times, Mary hopes surfing can bring peace of mind to anyone who seeks it. You know, you're out in Mother Nature, it's good for the brain, it's good for the body. You get exhausted and you don't even know you're getting exhausted. All right, lovelies, let's do this. Although California beaches are open, officials continue to remind residents that gathering without proper social distancing could spread COVID-19 among participants. Reporting from Ventura, I'm Cindy Rodriguez. Tropical Storm Zeta is forming in the Gulf of Mexico. It's expected to hit the U.S. Gulf Coast. The storm will strengthen into a hurricane with winds up to 60 miles per hour. Officials in Quintana Roo, where many resorts are located, are watching the storm. They prepared 71 shelters for tourists and residents. Zeta is expected to deliver four to eight inches of rain to parts of the Caribbean, Mexico, and the Florida Keys. Thousands of Nigerian youths are marching to support what's called the End the SARS movement. They want to stop police violence and brutality. Nigerian President Muhammadu Buhari wants the protesters to go home. I therefore call on our youth to discontinue the street protests and constructively engage government in finding solutions. At first, demonstrators wanted just to close a police unit known as Special Anti-Robbery Squad, or SARS. Now they also want more police reforms and an end to bad governance. Thousands of Chilean demonstrators poured into the streets last week celebrating the winning vote for a new constitution. After one year, one year after demonstrations swept the nation, Chileans voted to replace the dictatorship era document with a new constitution. With 100% of the ballots in, 78% voted for a new constitution. The old charter was approved in 1980 under dictator general Augusto Pinochet. The vote was originally scheduled for April, but COVID-19 forced a delay. Once the polls opened, voter turnout was high. Chileans are expected to vote in 2022 to approve or reject an early draft of a new constitution. Gyms have the strictest COVID-19 regulations. Valley View news reporter Ryan Ketchum visits the row house to see how some gyms are adapting. Row machines and weightlifting are a normal routine for some gym goers, but during the COVID-19 pandemic, fitness centers are hard to come by. A row coach at the row house, Ala Uwakawa, says they offered online classes and renting out row machines before opening back up. I know it was really hard for a lot of people, but we just wanted to provide um, that for people. So it was really great to see regulars that were continuing to come and keep connected um, with us during this time. Every time we jump up, Many LA County fitness centers have operated outside for several months. Most will continue outdoors since Governor Newsom's reopening plan requires a less than 8% positive test rate to operate inside. Trevor Benegas says outdoor conditions aren't perfect, but it's well worth it. We're able to conduct classes essentially the same way we would inside. Um, the atmosphere and the environment is essentially the same, so members are loving it. They're actually glad that they get to go out and do something. Fitness centers must follow strict sanitization protocols. The CDC requires all equipment to be properly sanitized before its next use. The row house member, Christina Kokenauer, says they always practice cleanliness, even prior to the pandemic. I don't personally worry, and I have a child at home with a low immune system. I feel that they really do their part in keeping everything clean and everybody distanced. Despite the regulations, Fitness centers like the Row House stay open to serve their communities. Reporting from Granada Hills for Valley View News, I'm Ryan Ketchum. 
When we come back, what Proposition 17 means for ex-cons on parole. Also, a school librarian works around COVID-19 to read books to students outdoors. Stay with us. dent in that? This one? No. Were you texting and driving again? Yes. Hi, Leah. Hi, Dad. Sorry about your bumper. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine that other people like you. It's more important that you like yourself and I'm comfortable with every part of me. Meals on wheel coming to my door as someone who's housebound assures me that I'm not forgotten. They care that I'm okay. My name is Asha Ida Bell, America. Let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. NASA astronaut Kay Rubens will cast her vote from space. Rubin started her six-month stay on the International Space Station in October. Rubin's votes as a Texas resident. She says if she can vote from space, people on the ground should vote too. Um, it's critical to participate in our democracy. We consider it an honor uh, to be able to vote from space. And so uh, we, we fill out a form and we vote via absentee ballot. A completed ballot is electronically sent to Earth from the space station. NASA planned for the SpaceX crew to join Rubens by voting in space, but their mission was delayed until November. Voting in space has been possible since 1997. With all the excitement about the presidential election, local elections and propositions might not be on everybody's mind. But reporter Bryce Wayne breaks down one important state proposition, Proposition 17. Voting reform is an important issue to many Californians. Proposition 17 would restore voting rights to felons and former convicts on parole. Retired parole officer Micah Sims says they should be able to vote after they've proven themselves as a functioning member of society. I think if felons have an extended time after they've completed their parole, if they have any, or their probation, let's say an uh, extended time of five years where they have no new offenses, I think they should be eligible to, to vote. Meanwhile, some Proposition 17 supporters say being on parole isn't a punishment. Instead, parole is supposed to reintroduce ex-convicts back into the world. But some opponents think ex-cons can't be trusted while on parole. Yet Jeff Mack, who has familial connections to felons, says every American deserves the right to vote. I believe that if you're done serving your time, then you should, you're, you're a member in society again. You get all the pros and the cons of being a citizen. If Prop 17 passes, California will join 19 states that grant paroled ex-convicts the right to vote. Two of those states, Connecticut and Vermont, allow felons to vote from prison. Max says he hopes to see California do the same. And without their ability to vote, I feel that they are not able to put someone into office that could accurately represent them. Prop 17 isn't the only voting reformation on the ballot this year in California. Prop 18 will change the rules for 17-year-olds hoping to vote in the primaries. For Valley View News, I'm Bryce Wayne. The American Music Awards nominations are in. The Weeknd and Roddy Rich tied for the most AMA nominations. Each has eight nominations. First-time nominee Megan Thee Stallion has five nominations. She's the most nominated female artist this year. Taylor Swift has four nominations. If she wins, Swift can break her own record of the most AMA wins of all time. The awards show airs Sunday, November 22nd. Last week, comedian Kevin Hart hosted the annual Muscular Dystrophy Association Telethon. Hart replaced the late Jerry Lewis, 
who raised nearly $2 billion in his 45 years as host. The first MDA Kevin Hart Kids Telethon streamed live for two hours. It featured comedy and musical performance throughout the night. Um, laughing is powerful, so being able to provide that and, and do it all over the globe is a significant blessing and one that I do not take for granted. The star-studded fundraiser raised more than $10.5 million. The money benefits the MDA and Hearts Charity. MDA supports research and care for more than 300,000 people in the U.S. who have the disease. Samsung Electronics Chairman Lee kun died last week. A cause of death wasn't given in the official statement. He suffered a heart attack in 2014 that frequently hospitalized him. He also had lung cancer in the 1990s. His dad founded Samsung in 1938. Lee became chairman after his father's death in 1987. Now, Lee's son is taking over as the public face of the company. Lee is survived by his wife, son, two daughters, four sisters, and seven grandchildren. As schools continue online learning, one school librarian decided to offer her time to read to students outside. Reporter Karina Gutierrez explains how this act of goodwill helps families. Nikki Capshaw is a librarian during the day. She works at Bret Hart Elementary School in Burbank. As schools closed due to COVID, Capshaw immediately felt the need to help her school, so she offers her time reading to kids in their front yards. They just need something that's a little bit normal, like their old routine was. And at school, I came to the library once a week, I read a story. At what she calls the long library, Capshaw reads a chapter a day to every student. Once a week, she comes once a week. Fidelia Sia's daughter attends Bret Hart Elementary. Capshaw has been reading to her daughter since the beginning of April. She says Capshaw has read a total of three books to her daughter. I think it's very um, a good idea for her to continue to read for the children in order to um, continue to establish that normalcy like of the librarian reading to you and then the kids get a connection to their school. Capshaw maintains her distance when reading to the kids. Since the start of the pandemic, she has read to about 20 kids throughout the week. While some enjoy story time in their front yard, others prefer connecting so online. Cried Avery, sailing out again with the frog. I have hay inside my dress. Librarian Nikki Capshaw says she will continue reading to students at Bret Hart Elementary School until schools reopen. Reporting from Burbank, I'm Karina Gutierrez for Valley View News. An Iowa dad created an epic Zoom meeting Halloween costume for his daughter. It's a foam board mimicking a Zoom meeting. Greg Dietzenbach put photos of his daughter as seven different monsters in Zoom squares. When she wears the mask, her face is in the middle. The top middle square is a mirror labeled next victim. Dietzenbach says he thought of the idea because his children spent so much time on Zoom. That's all for us at Valley View News. I'm Liliana Ramirez. And I'm Nikiko Burnett. For stories any time of day, go to our website sundial.csun.edu. Thanks for watching.